Pedravari from Budapest, who speaks on communication complexity coding and combinatorial number theory. Uh, Norbert, please. Thank you for the opportunity to speak again here. And I apologize this word because uh, I have a French editor, a French Latex, and it remained this word. Okay, so some introduction and background. Recently, uh, there is an interesting interplay uh, between communication complexity and combinatorial number theory. One of my favorite example is the exactly M problem. In some sense follows, there are three players, Alice, Bob, and Carol. Each has a pair of uh, integers up to N, X, Y for Alice, uh, X, Z for Bob, and Carol has Y, Z. And the question whether they number sum to N, uh, of course, with minimal exchange. A trivial protocol when Alice and say Bob send uh, the message to Carol and uh, he add the numbers and it takes constant time log n bits for communication. But there is a more efficient protocol that uses just the square root log n times uh, a constant. And the main tool here is the famous result of Berend a consequence of the balance theorem for arithmetic progressions, namely uh, one can uh, derive from the balance theorem that one can color the first n number with uh, two to the constant m squared with log n many colors that with no monochromatic three term arithmetic progression. And uh, using this fact, one can achieve that uh, it is enough to have just uh, constant times square root log n uh, in the changing of the of the uh, other information. Okay, it was just a, a remark before my talk, and I devote uh, my talk to uh, taking three topics. The first is a combinatorial number theoretical question. Coding with Elder Graham type sequence. It is a joint work with my two students, Bakos and Balfi, and another guy, another uh, PhD student from China, uh, Xiao Hu Yan. The next topic is again a communal number theoretical problem, a communication complexity question. Uh, or I should say that it is a, a completeness question in a, a higher integer lattice. And finally, okay, it is also a joint work with my students. And finally, a question in ZN. Uh, okay, I will give the details later. So let us consider firstly, the combinatorial number theoretical question, namely the complete sequences. Firstly, I define the subset sums. So say X here is a subset of positive integers. And uh, I uh, denote my P of X is the subset sum. So we have a sequence of uh, zero, one uh, numbers, epsilon, epsilon I, uh, finite many of them, uh, are one. So if, if we add in this form these numbers that we can perform it like uh, we take a subset of X and we add them and we collect all uh, subset sums. Okay, the next notion is a special sequence. Uh, I denoted by A subscript eta. It is uh, the sequence of uh, the integer part of the two power times this eta. And uh, this number will be, uh, I will use uh, two of them, alpha and beta. They are positive real numbers. Uh, okay, I mentioned it as a, a uh, problem of Erdős and Graham, but I should say that it is origin from Rényi. Rényi used this uh, uh, sequence maybe firstly, and later Erdős 
uh, used to uh, investigate uh, geometrical question in the uh, Hilbert spaces. So it has an interesting feature. And the question of Erdős and Graham was the following. For which condition of alpha and beta guarantee that uh, the, the subset sum of uh, A alpha union eta beta, eta b, uh, A beta, sorry, contains all sufficiently large integers? OK, uh, if uh, P of x uh, contains sufficiently large integers, then x is said to be complete sometimes. Uh, the notion that uh, uh, P of X contains all positive integers. And uh, this problem uh, uh, is a problem in the famous collection of Erdős and Graham, all the new problems and results in combinatorial number theory appeared in 80. The conjecture of Erdős and Graham was the following. If the ratio of alpha and beta is an irrational number, then eta alpha beta, A alpha beta, so the union of the two sets is complete. It is a challenging question, I should say. In the early of 80s, I mean in the last millennium, I detected some cases when A, a alpha beta is complete. I mentioned here just uh, only one when we take the dyadic representation of alpha and beta and uh, the dyadic representation of alpha is an infinite and uh, the dyadic representation of beta is a finite uh, one, then in this case, this set is complete. I suspect that the contrast is true in a weaker form also, namely then the ratio is, uh, the, the ratio uh, avoids the, the two powers. Uh, it is supported by my, my exam, example. Okay, using this uh, set A alpha, we can formalize a coding problem. It sounds as follows. Say that we have a binary code word, it's called uh, the message with n digits. So CN is a zero one sequence. Then Alice chooses an alpha for the message CN such that in base two, so alpha starts by one, uh, C1, C2, and so CN, the rest is what you want. Then uh, she creates the following set. A alpha is the sequence of the previous mentioned sequence. Then Alice and Bond previously agree on the secret key gamma. Gamma lies between zero and one. Then the, the information is the following. Alice chooses a random integer, let us denote it by capital N, in these intervals. So we add the numbers up to N minus one. We add one and divide it by gamma. And uh, the right uh, side of the interval is A N over gamma. The encrypted message, the cheaper text, will be this integer n. And it is what uh, Alice uh, sent to Bob. OK, what happens here? Let us denote it by capital S, the sum, the restricted sum of A alpha plus A alpha up to n. Uh, restricted means that uh, the pair uh, A differs from A prime. Okay. Okay, maybe you can see it. Uh, okay, I, I find hardly, I, I could not see correctly. So there is a query sequence. It maps from the first N numbers to zero and one. F of X is, can you see this, this uh, line or not? The first line, uh, it is uh, complicated for me. Mel, could you, could you see the first line or not? Yes, I can see it fine, thank you. Okay, yes. so the curious sequence is the following. It maps from the first N numbers to zero one. 
and f of x is uh, zero if x does not belong to s and f of x is one if uh, it belongs. Then anyone, everyone can query a sequence x node, x node plus one, x node plus two, and so on, x node plus L uh, with the following uh, uh, property. So he runs up to, or she runs up to x node plus L when uh, he or she found the number x node plus L in the S. So in this case, uh, the, the query uh, process uh, out. The length of the query sequence is denoted by here, capital L. Okay, with my students, we uh, prove the following theorem. If Ellie sends the message capital N, it is, it is public information for which uh, gamma N uh, lies between these uh, uh, previously mentioned uh, interval then Bob can get the message comparatively short way. So he asks a query sequence and the, the length of the, the question is at most uh, logarithm of n plus two. Uh, here two is the base of the logarithm. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, there is an eavesdropper Eve and uh, she also uh, tries to find the message then she has a hard job because the uh, 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 average length of the of the query is constant times n over log squared n. I should mention here that uh, if can take information from the negative answer as well if she knows the the structure of s. So when uh, f of x uh, is zero. Therefore, uh, assume that L is bonds, uh, the variable length of the query sequence bonded by a uh, power of n, and beta is, of course, less than one. So there is a restriction for the query sequence. And uh, my students went on the investigation and they found the following result. If the last term is small, so XL, when uh, uh, Bob found the, the element of S, it is less than n to the alpha, then there are at least gamma times n to the one minus alpha over two possible co code words for, n, for Cn. It means that Eve is uncertain about the determination of the true message. She has many possible code words. And uh, when XL is big, bigger than n to the alpha, then again, there are many uh, possible code words, namely constant times log n, where the constant depends only on alpha, beta, and uh, uh, maybe other uh, uh, parameters is also not. Okay, I turn the next uh, uh, question, the completeness in the integer like this. In 1996, I extended the investigation of completeness of sets of higher dimension. For example, I uh, took an answer of Sarkozy. It sounds as follows that uh, I have an arbitrary subset of the integer lattice in two dimensional one, and epsilon is a small positive uh, real then assume that the uh, uh, distance of m from the origin is big enough. And uh, we assume that the neighborhood of n, the neighborhood is uh, the distance to the almost one over eight. It contains an element uh, of uh, the set A. Then, uh, the P of A contains a, a, a structure, namely a, a, a lattice type uh, uh, set, namely there is a starting point and uh, there, are, there are two vectors, D1 and D2, and uh, every linear combination con uh, it belongs to the, the uh, P of A. And uh, additionally, the, the slope of D1 and D2 
uh, very close to the axis. So on the other words, A is almost subcomplete. Subcomplete means that uh, something like an arithmetic progression. And the background of Sharkozy's question was the following. I constructed a subset of the two-dimensional integer lattice with positive lower density such that P of A does not contain an arithmetic progression in the form. So arithmetic progression is a line containing a equidistributed points. So uh, the, there is a completely different structure in a higher dimension like in, in the integer. Later with uh, Chin Hui Hang and uh, Yong Gao Chen, we, can't, uh, we went on this uh, uh, investigation and some Birch type uh, result, uh, results uh, uh, obtained by that. Okay, I, I turn to the uh, communication question. So, so surprisingly, if you have uh, a Cartesian product of A1, A2, AK, and AI uh, is uh, complete for every I. So it means that P of AI uh, uh, covers uh, every positive integers. Then interestingly, P of X doesn't uh, cover necessarily the whole uh, uh, integer like this. Uh, just for an example, that X is a Cartesian product of two two powers, then these two points uh, is a uh, is an uh, uh, example, say uh, 15 and uh, 15, one does not belong, while 15 and one plus 256 belongs to this one. Okay, what is the communication problem? So we have a Cartesian product X, uh, A1, A2, and so AK a are uh, uh, actually. Uh, uh, complete sequences and we have the following uh, uh, informations one uh, belongs to each uh, AI uh, uh, every element of AI uh, except uh, one can be written as uh, the sum of previous uh, elements and it is an exponential times uh, I should say that many classical sequence fulfills this uh, 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 conditions, namely the two powers, Fibonacci sequences, and so on. And the question is the following. For given point uh, P, uh, we have to, uh, with minimal communication, they have to decide whether P elements of the P of X or not. Uh, I should say that uh, the first two conditions imply that uh, AI, are, uh, AI is complete. And we obtain by with my students, then it is enough to have a double log and many informations, the k times log, log n over log rho, where rho is the ratio of the consecutive elements plus k. And finally, okay, and finally, I uh, 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 discuss some question of. Uh, uh, the following uh, problem. The classical problem in testing linear linearity of Boolean function is the following. Given a, a function and uh, we want to determine the probability that uh, whether uh, it is a homomorphism in the sense that uh, the function of x plus y is uh, the sum of x, f of x and f of y, where x and y are uh, drawn uniformly. My test is the following. Uh, three non-zero polynomials are drawn from uh, uh, Z and X. A, a, a F for A, G for B, H for C. The test and the function are known just for the owner. With minimal communication, decide that uh, whether there is a three tuple from X, Y, and Z such that Okay, HT is actually the translation by T of the function C. So the question sounds as follows. What is the chance if we find an arbitrary T from ZN and we translate H by this T, that there is no coincidence between the product of A, uh, if, uh, uh, F, A, and G, B. And we want to have that this probability should be small. 
And it is promised that uh, for the original set, because there are uh, sets A, B, and C, uh, uh, it, it holds. Okay, so uh, my informal form of the statement is that uh, the minimal information does not depend on and just the binary lengths of the constant parameters I will uh, explain a little bit later it. Namely, the proposition is the, is the main result here. So let us denote it by D, the following form, A, B minus three. Draw an element T from the mode N, and uh, this T is uh, uh, chosen uniformly. Then the chance that uh, uh, T does not belong to this D can be uh, written in this form, so this ratio. Uh, uh, A is actually the image of uh, uh, X, and so on, you can find in the screen. And the E and A, E and B are the modular energy of A and B res respect. The proof is very short and I can explain quickly. Let us denote it by the, 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 the set of three tuples when X is uh, written in A, B minus C. Clearly, if we add for all X, it is the product of the cardinalities. Furthermore, by the Cauchy, we have that uh, the, the product in the square can be bounded by D, the cardinality D times the second moment of the, the representation function. So let us denote by the second moment of the representation function by S. So it is uh, actually the six tuples of ABC squared for which a b minus c is the same that a prime b prime minus c prime and rearranging it is the same that a b minus a prime b prime is the defense of the c's we turn to the discrete uh, fourier transform and uh, it's very simple way we can write in this form it is a usual uh, 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 way we separating the zero term and we take uh, out the, the maximum of the first uh, um, the first uh, uh, factor, and we have here a lemma. The lemma uh, uh, says that uh, uh, the maximum where r differs from zero, then this uh, restricted uh, sum of the exponential sum with uh, the uh, Cartesian product a and b is written in this form where uh, it contains the energy. I omit the easy proof because it is just the Cauchy three times. Uh, furthermore, the Parseval identity we have that the last term in the previous one here is this just C. And therefore, uh, we can uh, uh, bond the A, B minus C using uh, this form. by this form and uh, therefore we obtain the, the uh, uh, promised uh, uh, calculation that the probability is this form. So uh, finally, I would like to mention some few words about this uh, fraction. So it contains the uh, additive energy of A and uh, add, 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 additive energy of B, I mean the, the modular, and the denominator is the cardinality. Uh, really speaking for the players, it is enough to send the information on just the energies. I mean that the, the powers of the energies and not for the whole set A, B minus C. So it is, it is enough. So very short information is enough. Okay, related to this problem, one can ask the following question. I could not uh, uh, cover this problem completely, just some examples. It sounds as follows. We have a finite additive structure, say Zn, or generally a finite semigroup. And uh, we have a parameter eta between zero and one. And we collect all subset, finite subset of uh, this G, where the additive energy, the modular additive energy is less than, than the trivial. So the cardinality of A to the power three minus eta. The, the upper bond is three. 
and the question that how big could be A? So what is the, what is the power of A, 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 A here? There are some examples, say, when eta is one, it is uh, actually the Sidon set, in this case, namely the, the additive energy is almost uh, the square of S and one can achieve in this case. And finally, I mentioned an unpublished result of mine. I, I take the example and uh, the vector space F, F2 to the N, and I have an example. So I found a, an A where uh, it is N to the, a little bit bigger than the square, a little, little bit, N to the 0.79, and the additive energy is 2.66. And I should say that it is not necessarily optimal because uh, I, I found it just in just my hand and no more. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions for our speaker? Uh -huh. Okay, well. Uh, th thank you again, then, for a very, very nice talk. And uh, our next talk will be in um, four minutes. <laughs>